free electron theory which was successful in explaining the physical properties of metallic materials has its serious limitations because it is based on the free electron theory is based on one one electron approximation which means that we look at one electron and consider the effect of all the other conduction electrons on it in the form of a square well potential which is constant throughout the metal and to which this electron is subject and which prevents it from getting out of the metal as a whole. These are the two approximations and they are not generally valid. So, in order to make further progress, it is necessary to go beyond these approximations, mainly consider a more realistic situation in which we consider the periodic potential. experienced by an electron due to all the ion cores in the lattice, crystal lattice. So, there are ion cores which are regularly arranged in a crystal lattice in all three dimensions. I am showing the one dimensional situation. So, the potential is something like there will be So, and this will repeat itself everywhere. So, and so on. So, this is the periodic potential which we are talking about. This potential has the periodicity of the crystal lattice. So, we have to consider the motion of the electron subject to this given by the Schrodinger equation in quantum mechanics subject to this periodic potential V of r, which has the periodicity of the crystal lattice. In other words, V of r equals where r n is a general lattice vector n 1 a 1 plus n 2 a 2 plus n 3 a 3 and n 1 n 2 n 3 are integers and a 1 a 2 a 3 are the basic lattice translation vectors. So, this is simply the condition of periodicity that the potential remains the same at any given lattice point and it is equal to the value of the potential at any other lattice point given by the position vector r plus r n. So, this is the condition and we have to solve the Schrodinger equation h psi of r equals minus h cross square by 2 m del square plus V of r psi of r equal to E psi of r. So, we have to find the energy eigen values E by solving this Schrodinger equation subject to this and because of this periodicity it is possible to expand this in the form of a Fourier series the lattice 
periodic potential in the form where G is a reciprocal lattice vector. We already considered this while discussing the diffraction of X rays by a crystal lattice. And we can also expand the plane psi of r in the form of plane waves. where k is the wave vector of the electron. So, using this substituting this and this we get equals E sigma k c k e to the power i k dot r. That will be the equation that we have to solve and this can be written also in the form factoring out e to the power i k dot r. We can write this as which is valid for all r. Which means that the square bracketed quantity should vanish. So, we get So, that we can therefore, write psi k of r as sigma g c k minus g e to the power i k minus g dot r, which can also be written as u k of r e to the power i k dot r, where u k of r is So, we get the automatic property that this wave function psi k of r is modulated is a free electron wave function e to the power i k dot r modulated by the function u k of r such that u k of r equals u k of r plus r m. So, this has the modulating function has the periodicity of the lattice and so this is known as the block wave function.
So, the consequence of the translational invariance of the periodic crystallines lattice is that the wave function psi k of r is no longer the free electron plane wave function e to the power i k dot r, but e to the power i k dot r modulated by the u k of r which is also translationally invariant and this is the form of the block wave function which we should use in our description of the energy eigenvalues of an electron moving in a perfectly periodic potential. So, this is step 1, this is one important result which we will use in our discussion of the formation of so called energy bands in solids. So, we move on to the discussion of energy bands in solids. In this discussion, we have to answer the question how bands are formed. We already saw in our discussion of the energetics of a homonuclear diatomic molecule that if we have two molecules which are far apart and therefore non interacting, the energy eigenvalue of the two atom system is just twice the energy of the individual atoms and I am showing them together here in the form in which they are degenerate. So, this is energy of E A plus E B where A and B are atoms which are non interacting. Now, as the atoms are brought together we saw that the atoms start interacting we turn on an interaction, interatomic interaction, the electronic and nucleus, the electrons and the nuclei start interacting via the Coulomb potential. So, this interaction when it is turned on and the two molecules come close together, then we saw that the energy eigenvalue is going to be given by the secular determinant where H 1 1, H 2 2, H 1 2 and H 2 1 are matrix elements. of the interaction potential or interaction Hamiltonian between the individual atomic states represented by psi 1 and psi 2. So, solving this we see that we get a quadratic equation. with two roots so this quadratic equation has this form for which the roots are So, this shows this will be this is the H 1 1 plus H 2 2 is what we call E 1 plus E 2. These are the energies of the individual non interacting atoms and the resulting energy now in the presence of the interaction one of these is E 1 
is plus square root of h 1 1 plus h 2 2 square plus 4 h 1 2 h 2 1. Uh, yes, and the other one will be E two will be minus so there are two roots one corresponding to a lower value corresponding to the negative sign there and a higher energy value corresponding to. So, these are the E 2 and E 1. So, you see that any interaction when it is turned on the two at term system the energy levels are split in such a way doubly the two fold degeneracy is lifted and there are two in a non degenerate energy levels one with a higher energy eigenvalue and another with a lower energy eigenvalue. Now, this is the situation when two atoms interact we are now considering the periodic potential due to the entire lattice of all the 10 to the power 23 electrons. So, these are going to give you a large number of interactions of the same kind the solid is after all a large molecule. So, we are going to have a large amount number of splittings in this. So, which finally, becomes a quasi continuum when the number of interactions is very large. So, this is a quasi continuum. So, this continuum is what we call an energy band. So, in the presence of the perfectly periodic crystalline potential the electron energy are going to broaden into the form of energy bands. So, this is the mechanism of energy bands. So, in order to discuss the detailed nature of these energy bands it is necessary to go a little further this is only a qualitative description of the interaction. Now, let us consider a specific model in which we will be in a position to calculate the energy band structure. So, this model is a simplified one dimensional model known as chronic penny model. This discusses the motion of the electron in a one dimensional potential which is 0 for 0 less than x less than a and equals v 0 for minus v less than x less than a. So, this is known as less than 0. So, region 1 and this is region 2 pictorially this means that we have atoms which are situated like this and then you have a potential which is 0 here the potential is represented here this is the 0 and when it reaches the neighborhood of an ion core then the potential goes up like that. So, this is V 0, this is minus B, this is 0, this is A. So, in the two regions the Schrodinger equation becomes in one dimension d square psi 
by d f square plus 2 m e by h cross square psi equals 0. This is in region 1 where v f x is 0 and then So, this is region 1, this is region 2, this is region 1, this is region 2. Let us for shorthand write 2 m e by h cross square. as alpha square and 2 m into v naught minus e by h cross square as beta square. So, that this becomes and this is Okay. Now, we have the block solutions, the block form which we discussed already in the form u to the power. So, that substituting this and making differentiations and then substituting back, we get the two equations. These two equations become and where u 1 and u 2 are the function u here in the regions 1 and 2. So, these are the equations to be satisfied solved for u 1 and u 2. The solutions u 1 and u 2 should satisfy boundary conditions which are such that at the interface where at minus b at 0 and a they have to be matched. In other words u 1 of 0 they match the two wave functions match at x equal to 0 and then they again match at u 1 of minus b equals u 2 of a or u 1 of a is u 2 of minus b. This is a consequence of translation invariance and also conditions on the derivatives d u 1 by d x at x equal to 0 matches d u 2 by d x at x equal to 0 and a similar condition on d u 1 by d x at x equal to a equals d u 2 by d x at x equal to minus b. So, if I take the forms, this gives the form u 1 equals a e to the power i alpha minus k x plus b e to the power minus i alpha plus k x and u 2 is c e to the power i beta minus i k x plus d e to the power minus i beta plus i k x. So, we require these solutions u 1 and u 2 to satisfy these conditions. 
and that gives you a determinant which a 4 by 4 in determinant because of the 4 conditions there and which when expanded leads to the following condition to be satisfied namely beta square minus alpha square by 2 alpha beta sin alpha a sin h of beta b plus cos alpha a cosine hyperbolic beta b equal to cos k a plus b. So, that will be the condition to be satisfied which is got by expanding the 4 by 4 determinants. Now, we specify to the situation where v naught tends to infinity and b tends to 0. In other words, it is an extremely thin barrier which is infinitely high such that v naught b remains in this case we get limit beta b tending to 0 sin h beta b by beta b equals 1 and uh, therefore, we arrive at the condition p sin alpha a plus cos alpha a equal cos k a. So, this p is nothing but m v naught a b by h cross square. So, this is a parameter which involves the height of the potential barrier and the thickness of the potential barrier. So, this is the basic condition which determines the energy eigenvalues. We can see the nature of these energy bands by looking at the graphical representation of these energy bands. So, the figure shows the plot of the right hand side this side of this equation for a given value of p as a function of alpha a. So, we can see that there are shaded portions left hand side is plotted since the right hand side is just cosine function. So, it cannot go beyond the values of plus 1 and minus 1 and therefore, you find the shaded regions in this figure correspond to such values of cosine k a which are unreasonable and therefore, are forbidden they are not allowed. So, you find that energy values split into two regions one the unshaded ones corresponding to the allowed energy values and the shaded regions which correspond to the forbidden regions of the energy eigenvalues. So, these energy eigenvalues when plotted look like this they are shown the energy E versus k curve is shown in figure. So, this gives the energy versus the wave vector for an electron in a periodic potential described by the chronic penny model. So, you can see that there are discontinuities at k equal to pi by a and k equal to minus pi by a and then k equal to 2 pi by a k equal to minus 2 pi by a and so on. So, in general for all k equal to n pi by a plus or minus there are discontinuities in the energies. So, the energy eigenvalue goes from this value suddenly to this and all the energy eigenvalues in this gap region are not allowed. So, these are the allowed energy eigenvalues and these are the 
forbidden energy eigen values in the gap region. Again these are allowed set of eigen values then followed by an energy gap again in the next band so on for the third band and so on. So, this goes on and we find that this can be represented a bit more effectively in the so called reduced zone scheme. This only means that the states k and k plus or minus n into 2 pi by a n into pi by a these are all equivalent they are identical functions well form of the function while the energies are different. So, the energies are different, but they are described by the same function. So, the E versus k curve can be drawn by restricting the k values in the range minus pi by a to plus pi by a and all the energy values can be plotted within this region. So, such a plot is shown in figure where the first band has energies shown in the lower most curve these are the allowed values and then E 2 is the corresponding energy values for the second band plotted in the reduced scheme. Therefore, there is a gap between these two. So, there is an energy gap and then the next allowed band comes here that is E 2 k and similarly E 3 k with a gap here. So, this shows the entire energy band structure within this first Brillouin zone which is the region between minus pi by a and plus pi by a. So, this is this describes the band structure a typical band structure. So, the chronic Pony model gives us an easy way to understand the formation of energy bands in periodic solids and this is very important in a discussion of the properties of metals insulators and semiconductors these are a new class of materials which we are going to discuss from now on in a unified way how do you discuss this the metals let me just sketch the band structure in a simple way so this is the e energy and this is the band structure in a very crude form. So, we have states lying here this is empty and there are states here. So, these are states which are occupied and these are states which are forbidden and therefore, the states are forbidden and unoccupied empty and this is an occupied band. The band is of course, extends up to this energy value and it is only half full. This band is completely occupied the lower band. and this is completely empty this is the gap. So, this is the picture of a metal in a metal there is a completely occupied band separated from a partially occupied or half filled conduction band this is known as the valence band and this is the conduction band. So, the valence band is completely occupied whenever a band is completely occupied no states are free for an electron to get into because of Pauli exclusion principle and so conduction in such a band is not possible the electron cannot move on from one state to another. 
Similarly, if there is a completely empty band that is also something in which there are no electrons therefore, there is no conduction. So, for conduction to be possible in a material it must have a band structure with an uppermost band which is only partially filled. In this case the metal is only half filled and therefore, half of the band is empty and half of the band is occupied. So, the electrons the conduction electrons can move from the occupied states into the empty states thereby facilitating conduction. So, conduction is possible and this is the band structure which renders a metal conducting. Coming to the case of an insulator, an insulator how is its band structure? Its band structure again is shown schematically in this way. So, you have a upper band and a lower band this is a gap. So, this is the valence band which is completely occupied and a conduction band which is empty, but separated the conduction band which is empty is separated from the valence band which is completely occupied by a very large gap energy gap. So, for carriers to move into this empty band from the occupied band they have to cross overcome this barrier produced by this energy gap and they have to get in from the states in the valence band they have to get into the states in the empty unoccupied band upper band. So, this is possible only if they have the energy which is more than the gap energy and in an insulator this does not happen and therefore, this is non conducting. Now, we come to an another interesting class of material which we have not talked about so far which are known as semiconductors. So, here the band structure is very similar to that of an insulator, and there is an valence band below which is completely occupied. With an energy gap which in contrast to an insulator the energy gap is has a very small value. In other words the occupied valence band is separated from the unoccupied conduction band only by an extremely small amount of energy of the order of an electron volt. So, it is easily possible for carriers to get excited across this gap and get into the conduction band. Therefore, they are neither an insulator nor a metal like this they are semiconducting. So, this is the new class of material which we will be discussing from now on and the band structure theory the theory of energy bands provides a convenient mechanism or convenient way to understand the difference between an insulator a metal and a semiconductor from the point of view of their band structures and their relate this electronic band structure to the nature of the conduction in these materials. We will discuss semiconductors in the next session.